Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. There are times in the life of a country when we come together in common purpose for the good of the country. This is one of those times. For months now, we've worked hard with the governments of British Columbia and Alberta to help them chart a path forward together on the Trans Mountain Pipeline Expansion Project. Our discussion today was the culmination of many meetings, many discussions, and I'm sure that we'll have many more in the days and weeks ahead. The time we have taken in this process was necessary. That's democracy. We knew from day one that the only way to get this built was by consulting and engaging and listening to folks. Canada has completed the deepest consultations with rights holders ever, uh, ever on a major project in this country. And working with our Indigenous partners has been paramount. To date, 43 First Nations have negotiated benefit agreements with the project, 33 of those in British Columbia. Throughout, the Government of Canada's objective has been clear, to develop the vital infrastructure that is critical to our ability to get Canadian resources to global markets. And to do this while protecting our environment, which includes safeguarding our coastlines and combating climate change. Le temps que nous avons investi dans ce processus était nécessaire. C'est ce qu'exige la démocratie. Nous savions depuis le début que la seule façon de voir ce projet se réaliser était de consulter, de dialoguer et d'écouter les gens. Le Canada a tenu auprès des détenteurs de droits des consultations d'une ampleur sans précédent au pays pour la réalisation d'un projet majeur. Et le travail accompli avec nos partenaires autochtones était d'une importance primordiale. À ce jour, 43 Premières Nations ont négocié des ententes sur les avantages dans le cadre de ce projet. 33 d'entre elles sont en Colombie-Britannique. Tout au long de cette démarche, l'objectif du gouvernement du Canada a été clair développer l'infrastructure essentielle qui est cruciale pour notre capacité à acheminer les ressources canadiennes vers des marchés mondiaux et le faire tout en protégeant notre environnement, ce qui comprend notamment la protection de nos océans et la lutte contre les changements climatiques. Fundamental to this strategy is the truth that protecting our environment and growing our economy are not opposing values. On the contrary, each makes the other possible. We've put in place the most rigorous set of environmental standards, ocean protection, and coastline protection in the world. And we're not done. We know we can always do better, and we will. That sense of optimism, of hope, of ambition to leave the world a better place than we found it is who we are as Canadians. But as I said, when I first described this strategy to the Calgary Petroleum Club five years ago, hope alone is not enough. A relentless work ethic is needed, pragmatism is needed, and compromise is needed. And at the end of the day, no matter the province, territory, city, or town we call home, all Canadians love this country and we are there for each other in times of need. The Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion is a vital strategic interest to Canada. It will be built. But what does that mean to say that it's in the vital strategic interest of Canada? Well, it means that hundreds of thousands of Canadians who work long hours every day to put food on the table and to build this country depend on this project getting built. It means people in the oil patch are hurting, have been hurting for years, and we stand with them, just as we stand with forestry workers in BC, aerospace workers in Quebec, and auto workers in Ontario. It means the job of a pipe fitter in Fort Mac matters as much as that of an aluminum worker in Alma, as the forestry worker in Prince Rupert, the auto worker in Windsor, or the fishermen in St. John's. It means every single Canadian's family and future and dreams matter. 
It means the billions of public, in public funds for health care, for infrastructure, for the environment, now being lost to the discount on Canadian heavy crude because we can't get our product to new markets is not something we can accept as a permanent anchor on our national prospects. And it means that even as we continue to work hard with Premiers Notley and Horgan to find solutions, we must recognize that they remain at an impasse, which only the Government of Canada has the capacity and the authority to resolve. Les efforts du gouvernement de la Colombie-Britannique visant à bloquer ce projet ont soulevé des tensions des passions chez eux et à travers le pays. Mais je veux rappeler à tous nos dirigeants à travers le pays une chose. Les Britanno-Colombiens et les Albertains ne sont pas des adversaires. Ce sont des concitoyens, ce sont des voisins qui veulent ce qu'il y a de mieux pour eux-mêmes et les uns pour les autres. Chaque jour, des milieux, millions de Canadiens dans les deux provinces travaillent ensemble, s'amusent ensemble, construisent ensemble des communautés et un pays formidable. Les gens de la Colombie-Britannique ne veulent pas bloquer les ressources de l'Alberta. Ils veulent être certains que le littoral est protégé. Pendant trop longtemps, il ne l'était pas. Dorénavant, il le sera. Le plan de protection des océans le garantira. The B.C. government's efforts to block this project have obviously inflamed passions and political rhetoric in both provinces and across the country. So I want to encourage leaders of all stripes to keep one thing in mind as we go forward. B.C.ers and Albertans are not opponents. They are neighbors. They are fellow countrymen and women who want the best for themselves and for each other. Every day, millions of Canadians in both provinces work together, play together, build communities and a great country together. BCers don't want to block Alberta's resources. They want to know that the coast is protected. And for too long, it wasn't. And now, it will be. The Ocean's Protection Plan makes sure of that. Albertans care as much about Canada's natural beauty as anyone. Spend some time camping or hiking around Kananaskis country and talk to people. You won't find more passionate defenders of conservation and the environment. They wouldn't dream of putting it in jeopardy. We are a vast, varied, cooperative federation built on centuries of compromise. But we are, above all, one country governed by our constitution and by the rule of law. As such, I have instructed the Minister of Finance to initiate formal financial discussions with Kinder Morgan, the result of which will be to remove the uncertainty overhanging the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion project. We will not have these discussions in public, but construction will go ahead. I have also informed Premiers Notley and Horgan today that we are actively pursuing legislative options that will assert plus reinforce the Government of Canada's jurisdiction in this matter, which we know we clearly have. Canada is a country defined by hope and hard work to make it the hope that a better community, a better future, a better country is always possible, and the hard work to make that happen. So to make that dream a reality, Canadians need and expect an honest, open federal government that works with all sides to solve big problems in the national interest. This is both our constitutional right and our responsibility. We assert that right and embrace that responsibility. A little over a week ago, I got the chance to spend an hour or so in the lunchroom of the new state-of-the-art Suncor facility in Fort McMurray. The first thing that strikes you when you talk to people in Fort Mac is that they're from everywhere. Every province and territory, big cities and small towns from 
North Sydney to Campbell River, and all parts in between. The work these Canadians do together creates jobs and feeds families everywhere. It is with them in mind that we assert the Government of Canada's constitutional authority to complete this vital project. We're going through a time of great change here in Canada and around the world. Climate change, income inequality, the rise of extreme politics of both the right and the left, these are all forces with the potential to pull us apart. But we will weather these changes and we will come through them even stronger. We'll do this the way Canadians always do when we're tested by pulling together. <laughs>